So I'm a theoretical condensed matter physicist. Um, so most of my work has to do with uh, quantum mechanics of many, many particles uh, and the new kinds of phenomena you get. Um, quantum mechanics has been studied for a long time, but often in the context of one particle or one atom or few atoms, uh, we're really interested in knowing what are the new, new uh, properties you get when you take many quantum particles, put them all together. And uh, there's been a lot of amazing uh, phenomena that occur in that limit, things like superconductivity and things like these topological phases, uh, the quantum Hall effect. If you think about surfaces, um, you can deform surfaces, you can make changes, but you can ask what aspects of the surface is really preserved when you make all these deformations. Uh, you want to look at properties that are robust, that you can change them and your predictions can still be right. Um, so people have classified many, many different uh, mathematical problems using topology. We want to apply that to what are the different states you can get with many quantum particles. If you think about the kind of things that we do in, uh, in condensed matter physics, uh, so one place topology appears a lot is in describing topological defects. Um, so if you have a regular uh, pattern, you can have a defect. Uh, so, so one example people give is actually your, uh, in, the, in fingerprints. If you look at the walls in your, uh, in your fingerprint, uh, by and large they're regular, but every now and then you have these defects. Uh, and in fact, the way they, um, uh, they kind of record your fingerprint is to really locate where those defects are. So one example is uh, uh, vortices uh, in superconductors. Uh, these are defects in the velocity of the electrons, uh, and they can move when you pass a current, and that eventually ends up destroying superconductivity. Um, there's a very close analogy between that and defects in solids. So there are defects in solids called dislocations, and those make solids soft. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the physics of metallurgy has been ways to try to stop those defects from moving. So one reason why steel is much stronger than iron is people have put in carbon, which actually traps these defects. Uh, and people have used similar ideas for superconductors, trying to trap vortices from moving to make them better superconductors. So, you know, when I was an undergraduate, I was very interested in fundamental questions. So there was a range of things I could look at. I could look at, you know, string theory, and I could look at particle physics. Um, but what struck me about this area of quantum condensed matter physics is that there were fundamental questions and, you know, deep insights from quantum mechanics. So I was al always very interested in quantum mechanics and I wanted my research to be based on something related to quantum mechanics. Uh, this seemed to be a way of studying quantum mechanics without you know, getting into philosophy, for example, really applying it in the physical world, but also maintaining contact with experiments. Um, so I, that was the other thing that was very important to me, that my ideas were not just my ideas that you know, I had no idea whether it was correct or applicable to the real world or not. This was a way of doing interesting physics, but also keeping close to reality. Maybe Pluto, because it's kind of the underdog uh, planet. So. <laughs> yeah, it's barely a planet. At least maybe Venus, uh, just given the, you know, how bad things could get on Earth if you had the, right, had the wrong kinds of gases in your atmosphere. Uh. <laughs>